Hello, um, happy to see you here. Um, so, I'll jump right ahead. My name is Aurélien. I'm a French guy, so it's pretty hard to pronounce. Don't worry about it. I'm used to people mispronouncing my name. It's fine. I don't care. Um, I'm in Paris. I've been, I've been on the federal project for a long time as a contributor. And I've been in the federal engineering team since uh, 2012. So it's been three, four years. It's been fun. Um, I'm working on HyperKey. You've probably heard of it, otherwise you just stumbled in this room, which is fine, but it's unlikely. Uh, how many of you are using it uh, today, like on a daily basis? Maybe nobody. Uh, on a not daily basis, but sometimes, like when you want to, okay. Cool, so you will probably have a lot of questions, and I have a lot of room for that, so we'll be fine. We'll, we'll have time to talk and, and discuss where we want it to be going. Um, so you probably know the mailing list problem that we have today. We have um, we have a lot of developers who are really liking the mailing list, who have set up all their filters like they want to, like they want them to be, and who are used to switching between their mail clients and their channel and working that way. And the workflows of most users is quite different. And so we have two populations of people who are not talking to each other, and that's that's too bad. Should be fixed. That's what, what we're trying to do with HyperKitty. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to... Uh, thanks. So, <coughs> this is what we're going to talk about. Um, so, yeah, that's the status, and then we'll, I'll, I'll show you uh, where we're going and what you, what you have to do if you want to install it. Mailman 3, as opposed to Mailman 2, is a much, much more modern uh, platform. It's a very, it's a completely rewrite. There is almost no code in common between Mailman 2 and Mailman 3. Um, it's a 100% Python 3 application. It's one of the first that was out. Uh, one of the first big uh, application that is a, uh, it's not Python 2 compatible, just uh, Python 3. It's a very modular design, very interesting from an engineering point of view, uh, from a um, uh, develop, uh, develop, uh, software engineering point of view. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff about it. You don't get those monthly reminders with your password in, in, in clear text every month. That's, yeah, that was a problem. And um, it's gone, so this is good. It has a REST API that is very extendable and very easy to use. With a, there is also a Python library that connects to this, Python, to this REST API to uh, help you uh, deal with objects instead of dealing, dealing with REST endpoints and all that. Uh, it handles virtual domains, so you can have several different domains uh, handled by the same moment servers. For example, in Fedora, we have fedoraproject.org well, and list.fedorahosted.org, which are handled by the same element servers. Uh, before, we had to have two instances. And you have this concept of user that was not really present in Mailman 2. Uh, and a user can have several addresses, different email addresses. And so, for example, if you are uh, subscribed to a list with one address and subscribe to a different list with another address, you can have a global view of all your subscriptions and do stuff like, um, I want uh, my general setting for this value to be such as such and have uh, and override this value for your different subscriptions if needed. So that's a really interesting concept for mailing lists. Mailman itself is just the, 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 mail, the mail handling system. It only deals with um, LMTP and SMTP. It doesn't have a web interface uh, as Mailman 2 used to be. Um, Mailman 2 used to have everything in the same package. Mailman 3 doesn't do that. It's, it, the, actually, the mailing guys, they, that's how they're building themselves, they realize that uh, with, um, doing a web interface is a, you know, requires a different skill set. <laughs> so they, they say, well, I know how to handle mail and I know how to uh, I deal with SMTP and all that, but I don't know how to make a web interface. I'll leave that out for other people to do. And the web interface, the web admin UI is called Posterius. It's, uh, it's, it's based on Django, uh, so it's Python also. And it's very, it's, it's, it's much modern design than what we used to have with Mainland 2, obviously. 
but it is not the admin UI. Uh, it, it, it is the admin UI, it is not the archiving UI. Uh, Posturing doesn't do the archiving. Archiving is the role of HyperKiddy. So HyperKiddy is a very small plugin that goes into main man and, and um, um, connects to uh, new email arriving for archiving and sends those to a web application, which is the main HyperKiddy um, code base. It's based on Python and Django also. It's and it stores the email in an SQL database, so it can be queried afterwards. It runs some analytics and, and statistics about them. Um, and from the from the design standpoint, from the user perspective, it kind of looks like a web forum where you have threads and people replying to those threads. Um, it doesn't look like the static HTML thing that was produced by uh, Mailman 2 at the time. But that's one of the things we wanted to avoid. Uh, you can do a full, te a full text search uh, inside the, uh, the list. Um, the good thing about this is you can do a search across different mailing lists. That wasn't really possible with uh, Mailman 2 before. Well, you could always search Google, but if your list is private, then you're stuck. You can, so you can also search in private lists. If you're connected, it will recognize which list you are subscribed to and it will uh, enable you to search inside those, li those lists. So it's really a deeply integrated search system. It has a uh, lot of modern web features that you can see on forums. You can like posts, you can add tags, you can uh, favorite some threads and, and keep them in your home uh, page to, um, for, to, to get back to them later. And it is mobile friendly. You can, the, the UI uh, resizes depending on, on the size of your, of your screen and puts the different uh, widgets differently um, if you have a small screen. So it's not only getting smaller, it's actually a real world to make it easier. So this is the, archi the architecture. Um, Mailman 3 is up there. Uh, it, it talks to an uh, SQL database. We are using PostgreSQL in, uh, in, in Fedora, in, in the Fedora infrastructure. But it can also use a very lightweight database. It can also use a, um, a, C, um, uh, a SQLite uh, as a database. It, it is going to be able to support MySQL. It's being, uh, the pull request is being worked on right now. So I, I think it will support MySQL, uh, MySQL in, a, in a short while. So it has this REST API that every interface communicates with. Uh, of course, it receives um, mail from the, your mail server. Uh, today, I think, uh, I think there is another mail server that is supported besides Postfix, and I can't remember which one it is. I think it's Exim, but I'm not certain. So um, the admin UI is Postfix, as I said before. It only talks to uh, mail mail through the REST API. So everything that Posterius does on the web interface, you can do it on the command line or use it using any kind of uh, um, web client. Uh, that's, for example, the script that you would write that would directly call the, the REST API. If you, have, if you want, for example, to uh, add a query mailman for mailing lists and or memberships, users, or create mailing lists dynamically from something else, you can do it using the REST API. Um, uh, Posteries doesn't have a database in itself. That's not entirely true, but it's almost and it's almost true. It has just the basic uh, um, C, um, SQL requirements that Django has. It doesn't have very specific models. Hyperkiddy, on the on the on, on the other hand, has a very specific database because it stores the email in the database. It also has a REST API, but it's kind of lacking right now. It's one of the things that we want to improve on, having a better REST API for HyperKey. Um, so this is for list admins, people who are, it can also be users if you want to subscribe to, the, to those lists, but it's, most of the UI is made for list administrators who want to change the settings on, on their main lists. And HyperKey is more for users who want to browse the archives, reply from the web, um, subscribe to, to uh, or see what the general trends are on their mailing lists, have a lot of interesting uh, metadata that you wouldn't have otherwise. In the federal infrastructure right now, we have four servers. Um, 
that's the open server, that is, that's in the federal cloud. Uh, that I'm almost the only, the only one using it at the moment. There's a staging server where I put the changes and those them under two production servers. Um, currently, we don't have a setup uh, that will that would allow higher availability between those two servers. But uh, that's one of the things that we plan to uh, to do. It's the point using RPMs. It's uh, well seven boxes. Uh, so I have RPMs for well seven that are really easy to install and. Uh, they are glued together with Ansible rules and templates. Um, the thing is, since Mailman is uh, can function without Posterius or Hyperkit, it can, it can work by itself. It doesn't need the web interface. And Posterius can be installed without Hyperkit. Hyperkit can be installed without Posterius. It's all very independent, so I wanted to reflect that in the RPMs. The RPMs are very independent. But if you want to have them all together, it's better to, have a, to, to write the, the, the configuration file as such and make sure that they are all the same Django instance itself, instead of different Django instances. So I have a, a couple of files in the Ansible world that you can look at. All the, this Ansible world is in the federal infrastructure Git repo, so you can just check it out and see what it's, uh, see what, uh, see what it consists of. We have migrated from Ingman 2.1, of course. Um, it's currently supporting two virtual domains. As I said before, there's uh, list.federalproject.org and list.federalhosting.org. Um, the migration has been very progressive. We started last uh, summer, actually, with um, automating mailing list, uh, like um, the um, commits, the commits mailing list, and something that are that aren't really user talking to each other. It was less dangerous, uh, and also we could try and test the load very easily because those lists are very high, high volume. Migration has been progressive, and we've, we've had actually setbacks, and we had to roll back a few things. Uh, there were features that were not present in Mainman 3 at that time, and were very, were, were really used in Mainman, in our Mainman 2 setup, except for one list. For example, the topic system in Mainman um, well, in Mainman 2, because that's not in Mainman 3 anymore, it was a system where you could define um, filters in Mainman itself, instead of having everybody set, the, set up the filters on their main client. For example, you could say, uh, this is a package allowance list, and I, set up, I have a pattern matching F23 on the subject, or F24 on the subject, or F25 on the, sub on the subject. And uh, people could subscribe to those filters instead of to the whole mailing list. So they would only receive the email that, were, uh, that they were directly interested in. This, has been, this hasn't been ported to Mailman 3 uh, as of now. So we had to wait and actually switch the system for, uh, for the migration um, and, and do something different. It's not supported anymore. Uh, if people want to get updates about new packages for different architectures, they can just look at the RSS feed in body, and they are much easier to parse, of course, than having any mail sent to you. Header filters was something also that was kind of not really ready in Mainman 3. You couldn't really uh, set filters and have different actions. Header filters is something that was thought of for spam filtering. So list, uh, list admins could say, um, on top of the main spam filtering system that looks at the X spam header, I want to consider a spam uh, pa patterns like uh, something in this subject or something else. And in Fedora, because we have a lot of different usage and a lot of admins that want to do specific things, it was kind of abused into doing a lot of different things, like rejecting email that came from an automated uh, commit system if it didn't contain the proper header received from or if it didn't pass through the right servers uh, during the processing of the email. So it was very complicated and it was not the main man, the people who wrote main man didn't think about this kind of use case. So I had to I actually had to co contribute the patch to make something much more generic. So this is this is done, uh, but it has set us back a couple a couple months. It was mostly done by set by December to, uh, last year, and it's, the migration is done since this spring, so it's very recent. 
Um, I also have inter uh, fast integration in Mailment uh, in uh, HyperKid actually, and uh, in Postgres at the moment. So it uses the OpenID login that we have in fast in Epsilon actually. And your fast email addresses are uh, retrieved and added to Mailman as a secondary address, as before you can have several different addresses in Mailman. Um, this is something that has been working at some point and, and, and didn't work for some user. I modified it and the people who logged in at first didn't get this and it's only on the first login that you get it. So if you don't have, uh, if you had to manually enter another email address, it's probably because you were more of the, one of the early people trying it. Which is good and and too bad at the same time. Um, that's what, so that's what we are. What, that's where we are right now. Uh, we want to we want to upgrade to future versions of mainland, but uh, at the moment the version three point one is work, is being worked on. It's going to be out probably by September, but we're not quite sure because it's summer and. It's mostly, uh, there are very few people who are to full time on mainland. Uh, what's, go what's going to happen in mainland for the next version is mainly a, re a reliable migration process that I've been using Fedora to test. <laughs> uh, well, as usual, Fedora is, uh, is, uh, is helping upstream uh, communities with, uh, with, with uh, approving them and, and helping them um, uh, with there are features, so I think it's a good thing that we that we pioneer this in, in Mailman. Uh, it probably would have taken a lot more time if Federal wasn't here to, to, to help get this migration. There's also currently not a, a not su an unsubscribed workflow, so if you just send an email uh, to the unsubscribe list, it won't, it won't check that you're actually the owner of this email. Don't try this at home, but you can currently unsubscribe anybody from the, I should turn off this webcam. You can currently unsubscribe anybody just by sending an email to the right address, spoofing their uh, spam address, but yeah, that's bad. But it's gonna be fixed. Um, you will be able to edit the, the messages that are sent to your users when they, are, when they log in and when they, um, when they, not when they log in, but when they subscribe to us. There's a lot of automated templates like uh, welcome to the list, etc., etc. It's currently files in the in the file system that you can only edit if you have uh, login access to the file system. It's going to be available on the login interface for the next version. Um, and translations. It's currently not translated except it's not available in anything else but English at the moment uh, because it's been moving a lot these uh, this past month and years. So yeah, it's gonna. It's going to happen. I don't think it will be ready for free dot one though. It's going to take a, a bit more time. The web UIs will also uh, get improved lots in the coming weeks and months. Uh, we were uh, we were relying on put on um, Persona for authentication. I don't know if you know about it, but it's uh, it's a service that was provided by Mozilla that will let you authenticate and, and check your, your val the validity of your email and use it eventually other services. For example, if you logged into Persona with a federal project.org email, it would send you to Ypsilon and FAST for uh, uh, authentication. It would connect to Google for Gmail addresses. It would do a lot of things, except Mozilla decide to, decided to retire it. It's gonna, the service is going to end um, by, by October, I think. So we'll have to find a different tutorial or something else. We're going to have local authentications. It's something that we wanted to avoid because, well, it's okay. You have to have a way for people to, to be reminded of their password when they, when they lose it. You have to make sure that it's an actual user who creates the account. There's a lot of stuff that goes with local authentication that we wanted to avoid, but we're going to have to do it anyway. So. So it will, it will be available by the end of this month, I think. We want to have some time before Persona is actually shut down. So translation is also a big thing that we want to, uh, to improve on. For HyperKitty, it's more, it's more specifically um, for attachments. Currently, you can, if you reply from the web, you can't attach anything. It would be nice to be able to do so. So that's something that, that should be worked on. It's, it's not as easy as it sounds because it has to be done mostly in JavaScript and, and that's 
needs endpoints and well, oh well, it's not instantaneous. <laughs> uh, the REST API also needs some work. But we currently don't have many people using the REST API in HackerK, that's why it's not so fully um, full featured. But with the coming of hubs, it's going to be used a lot more. Um, hubs is going to, uh, to, to have a hyperkill widget where you, can, uh, where you could do a lot of what, see what you're doing on your mailing list and re maybe reply to people. It's not, the specifications are fully defined yet, but it will be there. And that's going to talk to the REST APIs. Um, there is also a need for system, uh, system design, failover and load balancing architecture. I think MailMan should be already working uh, with a with a, host, well, with a, a load balancing system, but it hasn't been really tested yet, so it should be done before we move that to production, obviously. Um, the, the components are really well separated. It should, be work. It, it should work. And as always, uh, uh, as always, when you have like new projects or very big new releases of existing projects, it's something that must be announced and, and, and mailing communities across the world need to be helped moving to mainland 3. It's going to take a while. Um, Red Hat is also very interesting in moving their main internal mailing system to uh, HyperKitty and mainland 3. Uh, they currently have several thousand mailing lists that need to be moved. It's, they have more mailing lists but less traffic than we do in Fedora. So it's kind of similar but not exactly the same. Docker images would be nice too. Some people apparently like Docker. I've heard that somewhere. So if you want to, uh, if you want to have HyperKey on your system, there is a couple of things that you uh, that you can do. You can use a, pr a small system called Mainland Bundler, which is just um, a build out, a, a very small build out uh, script that will bring all the dependencies together. It will provide them with a config file that binds it all together. And uh, yeah, it brings them all together, it bands them all together, and in darkness mode. No, that's, that's not the right quote. Um, and um, it's more for development setups, though, because um, it lives in a, in a single directory. It, it isn't really, well, it doesn't create the necessary users, so if you want security, it's not, it's not great. Uh, so it's more for the development setup, or if you want to try it at home. I do encourage you to try it at home, it's good. And for real production deployments, what we are currently using in Fedora is RPMs for Red 7, or CentOS 7, of course. Uh, it does have SC Linux support, so that's, um, that's a good thing. It, can, it, is, it is protected just like Mainland 2 was, and it, it works well with SC Linux enabled. Uh, the migrations are a bit simplified uh, than what they were before. You have a command line that will help you migrate previous systems. You can have mainland 2 and mainland 3 at the same time on the same machine. Uh, they don't use the same uh, uh, directories or namespaces, so it's, it works. And you can use the playbooks that we have been using. There's no reason why you shouldn't be able to do that. It, it is a bit specific to the federal infrastructure, but not as much. We have a role that is only mainland and hyperkitty specific and doesn't depend on anything that we have in, in the federal, in federal infra. There are a couple of things that you need to watch out for, though, uh, when you do your migration. You have to warn your users that the, uh, there's been changing in the way uh, headers are done on, on emails sent to people. There used to be this X being there header that was there, that has been there for a long time, and it actually has been deprecated since like 2010 or maybe nine. But since main main hadn't had uh, hadn't had a, a large new release in that time, no one saw it. Uh, so other mailing systems stopped using it, and main main has finally stopped using it. But a lot of people are still using uh, XB in their header for their for their filtering. So now the standard is, is list ID. It's not exactly the same. Uh, it, it has brackets, and the list ID has a dot instead of the at symbol. But it's really usable. It doesn't have list topics. As I said before, the, this kind of server-side filtering is gone. Uh, so if you rely a lot on it, well, do something else. And migrating data can be complex because uh, the, 
um, the, structure, the data structures that were there in Mainland 2.1 uh, are really different. Um, there are different ways to be subscribed to a mailing list. There's a concept of non-members that was really a, a corner case in Mainland 2. So migration of data is not one-on-one. -on -one. So some, when you want to migrate your existing Mainland 2 system, uh, make sure that it's still working as you want to afterwards. Like check that the permissions are correct, that no one on the list is uh, allowed to send emails they weren't allowed before. But I don't think there are problems. But since you can, we, we've tested a lot the main the the federal uh, lists, but the we have actually we don't have that many difference in our uh, mailing list setups. We have mostly public lists, uh, very few lists are private, and we don't have very complex setups in the, in the means on the admin side. So. If you have something more complex, make sure that, it's, uh, that the data is migrated properly. And if it's not, call me. Because I, I really need to, uh, well, call me, not call me, but report that. Um, there could also be performance issues. We have had some in the Federal and of course. Um, one of the main problems is that the main and REST server that Postalus always communicates with is single threaded So it can only, re uh, it can only uh, answer one request at a time. Requests should be small, but when you have a lot of them, it can be a bottleneck. So we are thinking of like putting some kind of proxy in between uh, to to uh, re uh, uh, re allocate that. Um, there is also some caching done on HyperKitty um, that is not as good as it could be because we don't. Well, there is no. You can you can HyperKitty cannot subscribe to mainland signals at the moment. It's really separated uh, components. So we don't, for example, we don't get notifications. HyperKid doesn't get a notification when someone subscribes to a list. And it's, since it's a check that it has to do a lot, like almost all the time when you connect to, to, uh, to the web interface, it is cached. But cache invalidation isn't really correct because we don't get the signal when someone changes the membership. So you know, cache invalidation, always an issue. Uh, it can lead to uh, performance issues if you set the cache too well, and it can be, well, it's something, make sure you have a memcached uh, server on your machine if you want to run it with more like 10 lists, for example. That will help. I don't know if any of you guys have any straight mail servers at the moment, or mail uh, no server admins? Nope? Well. So, if you want to work with all that, there's a lot of things that can be done. Um, mostly trying it at home, testing it, uh, or trying testing the federal, uh, the federal system that we have. Well, don't send useless emails to um, to their list because people won't like you. Um, there's a lot of uh, Django optimization that could be done. Um, mostly on Posterius, the guy who wrote, post wrote Posterius uh, didn't have much experience on, on Django projects before that. So it, there are still things that were done. And it was written at the time of Django 1.4. So there are still some things that could be upgraded uh, to newer uh, infrastructure, newer uh, requirements. We currently require Django 1.8 because it's a long-term supported version. And there are a lot of things that could be improved, I think, in the, on the code now that we have this higher requirement than before. Um, one of the goals of HyperKitty is to give you a quick idea of how your mailing list are doing, uh, what is the traffic on, on, on the mailing list, and, and where it's going, uh, if it's dormant or not. And that's something that um, we always, we're always trying to get better metrics. The popularity of the mailing list could be uh, analyzed by looking at the number of people who post, but it could be also uh, it, co it can also be a very non-relevant metric when you have like a lot of messages and and a few people who are actually sending them. There's a lot of thinking to do to find the relevant metrics. Um, so yeah, there's, that doesn't imply writing code, just thinking about it. We have this uh, this ID uh, at some point in HyperKitty to try to detect thread patterns. And, and and do something about it. For example, when you have like you have this thread where two people are replying to each other in public and it goes on for ages, 
uh, it's, it's, it's can be actually very easily detectable in, uh, in HyperKey, and we could do funny stuff with that. We could like keep them, keep them in their own bubble so they don't, uh, so they don't uh, disturb everybody else. We could do a lot of things, and a lot of, and there's a lot of fun things that can be done with, uh, with many software. And um, or like people asked for someone asked for very simple questions and you have everybody who answered the same the, kind of the same thing at a few uh, mi minutes in a few minutes interval. There's a lot of interesting patterns that could be detected and, and acted up upon. So that should be that could be fun. And you could add, for example, you could add tags to this discussion. Um, yeah, there's a lot of funny things that we could do. Um, it has been. It has been one of the ideas of the project for a long time, but no one actually got around to write something about this. So, why not? And the comment, of course, needs to be improved. Um, currently, we have RPMs for L7, as I said, but there's a lot of things that could be, uh, well, not everybody uses uh, L7 or Central 7. So, I know it's too bad for them, but still. And there's also another technical thing that could be done, uh, writing tutorials or having ideas on, on design to help people understand mailing is better. Um, people aren't used to mailing list today as they were 20 years ago, and it should be made more accessible, that's normal, and it should be made more accessible. So, uh, so our collection server is at this step for our org. Um, there are dots that you can install. The first line, a uh, moment bundler, is the, the dots for the, the bundler installer that install everything all together. But it's also a very interesting first read if you want to deploy mailman uh, in your infrastructure. And there's uh, the tutorial on HyperKitty, but this one only talks about HyperKitty. There is nothing about mailman, it's the installation of mailman itself in this uh, tutorial in this documentation. And the code is also going to be like uh, the rest of the mainland project. So if you if you are uh, in tab.com slash mainland you have all the mainland projects. Mainland is a new project, so it can be hosted on GitHub uh, the because it's not open source. But GitLab is fine. And we have yeah so we have mainland serve uh, hyperkey all the uh, dependency, the, the, not the dependencies, but the libraries that will help you access the rest server and all that. That's also where you can import bugs uh, or um, ask for features more. So I think that's the end. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, if you have questions or if you like questions, I'm ready to answer them and or IDs or anything. Yes. So I was interested in contributing. Mm -hmm. statistics and the standard yeah. so, so what does it work? Um, it's there isn't really a proper um, plugin infrastructure in HyperKey at the moment, but all email are uh, when there is an email arriving in HyperKey, it goes through this uh, basic function that creates the object and everything, and there is a um, there's a, a signal sent, it's a Django signal, sent to, um, to uh, well, the Django system at, uh, in general. So what could be done is have a look at the, um, at the, the models in HyperKitty. And so it's very, it's very straightforward that you have an email class with a content attribute where you have all your content and all that. And, um, and yeah, if you do your Django, or, or Python. Okay. I know Python very okay. So it's 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 not it's not very hard. The only thing that you will probably need is understand the ORM uh, for the the what connects you to the database and the structure how to make requests in the database. But other than that, um, there's currently uh, some some function that uh, rebuilds the threads with uh, using the headers and the um, uh, reply to headers. And it's a really separate function uh, that um, that actually uses. I don't think it, I think it, it uses Network X, so it's a it's a Python library to do networks and, and, and representations. This is this is could be a good start to to look at if you want to know how to handle uh, like make requests in the database. 
they don't have hyper-TPA which could just make good data? It's, at the moment, it doesn't have really a point system with an API, but you can get the signal and uh, then do work on the, on the on the email, on the object that you are there, like make good best. And then you can you can go find the thread the, that is connected to this email and add text to it. It's, a, it's, a, it's I don't know if you've worked with a SQL Alchemy or uh, or else before. Okay, so it kind of looks the same. You you have a, a, a text property that you can add things to. But yeah, you should talk to me. <laughs> I'll, I'll get you through it. That's interesting. Yeah. Do you think like, uh, it should be like, we should work on this now because like, right now I think that there's a big problem. Yeah. Yeah, that's the problem. It could be integrated with that. I think it's quite independent from the hubs widget. The thing is, with hubs, we're trying to have something that only uh, is that is very remote from our package that only talks to the to the REST API, and I don't. You won't, for example, you won't get a notification on the REST API when an email comes in. You you can only get this by connecting to the signal in uh, in Django in Python. So it it will be different. I think we can we can start with the with the okay. with the widget, but not that. Um, but it's gonna be it's gonna be quite different code bases. It's yes. more common, but I think it's way, way better than the only so you deserve some applause. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. It's actually most, mostly, uh, as I said before, it's mostly designers work that really are really good. Making a, a website in, in Django isn't quite that hard. Uh, even that, there, are, there are plenty of cases because it's actually connecting to REST API downstream and, and making sure that, well, it's actually a whole stack, but I think that's what's really, really interesting in, in HyperKitty is the design and the ideas behind it. And that, it, it's a good thing that there's not a lot of code, it means more people can contribute to it. But my, most of my work uh, these last months have been on the rest of the stack, actually, on main man, on my on, on post-service, because that's where um, it was needed. Uh, it was more. Hyperkitty was is been pretty stable these last month, um, uh, code base wise, I mean. Um, so, yeah. But thanks, thanks. <laughs> I think it's needed. <laughs> that's what it is. Okay, so I'm gonna stop the thing.